I want to talk about deductive inferences. Before I just talked about inferences of that sort being successful or not or being fallacious or not. Here I want to precise my language. I want to talk about validity versus invalidity. A valid deductive argument is the successful deductive inference. That's when the deductive inference claim holds up. It is impossible for the conclusion to be false given that the premises are true. An invalid deductive argument is one in which the deductive inference claim did not hold up. There remains a possibility of a conclusion being false even assuming the truth of the premises. The thing is, if you have a valid argument, it has a valid form or shape. It's set up so that the truth of the premises will be funneled into the conclusion, so to speak. That's why we call such arguments genuinely truth-preserving. They do not lose truth on the travel from premises to conclusions. In the case of an invalid argument or one that has an incorrect or fallacious form, the truth can be lost on the way from premises to a conclusion. Now sometimes you might get lucky. Maybe you have true premises and it just happens to be the case that you wind up at a true conclusion. But that's not in virtue of the argument's shape. That's just a matter of luck because invalid argument forms are such that, if you'll pardon the pun, they can't handle the truth. So there are several principles governing validity and by the same token governing invalidity. First of all, no middle ground as we said earlier. Validity is all or nothing. And validity is not a matter of the truth values of the premises or the conclusions. It's rather just a matter of the relationship between the premises and the conclusion. So here's a valid argument that has true premises and a true conclusion. That's a nice case. If all men are mortal, as the first premise claims, and Socrates is a man, as the second premise claims, Socrates is indeed mortal. But validity does not require true premises and a true conclusion, even though this structure is a very good one. You could have a valid argument which you had false premises and a false conclusion, like this one. All television networks are terrorist organizations. NBC is a television network. Does it follow that NBC is a terrorist organization? Actually, yeah, it would. Basically, that would happen for all the same reasons as in the previous argument. If all television networks fall within the category of terrorist organizations and NBC, at least this premise is true, is a television network that puts NBC squarely in the blue container of terrorist organizations. Again, valid argument and it doesn't matter whether the premises are true or false, it's a matter of the structure of this argument. Now here's an argument that's invalid, but it has true premises and a true conclusion. If all banks are financial institutions, we'll put our red circle here right within the category of the blue circle. And premise two says Wells Fargo is a financial institution, but what does that tell us? It tell us, well, tells us that Wells Fargo goes somewhere in the blue. Does the conclusion follow that Wells Fargo is in the red bank category? That was not secured by these premises. Now this may be a little con confusing. We have a true conclusion here. Is the argument still junk just because the reasoning or the inference was a bad or invalid one? And the answer here is yes. This junk argument could just as easily have led us to a falsehood in virtue of its bad form or bad shape. So if it does lead us to the truth, pretty much we're in the position of the proverbial blind squirrel getting lucky and finding a nut. Look at that argument once more. It's invalid and it has true premises and a true conclusion. Now notice what happens if I swap out the term banks, financial institutions, and Wells Fargo. How about instead squirrels, animals, and Socrates? Same type of argument, I just swapped out the terms in the red, blue, and black respectively. If all squirrels are animals and Socrates is an animal, does it follow that Socrates is a squirrel? Well, once again, this illustrates the point that these sorts of arguments are invalid precisely because they're unreliable. So deductive arguments, remember, are valid or invalid, degree of support is 100% or zero. Trust them or don't, there's no middle ground. Now soundness applies to a deductive argument when two conditions are met. Basically, to have a sound argument, you have to have a valid argument with all true premises. Now, in those cases, you have a great argument. An unsound argument is either invalid, it has a false premise, or it may fail on both counts. But soundness requires that both of the key elements of a deductive argument be satisfactorily met. Strong inference, or st appropriate inference, and true premises. 
Now, in order to see how our new and precise language applies to arguments, let's go back to an illustration that I've been using throughout this uh, lecture series. All Vulcans are cannibals, and Captain Kirk is a Vulcan. Is Captain Kirk a cannibal? Is there something illogical about this argument? Well, let's use more precise language now that we have it in hand. What we asked ourselves is whether Captain Kirk, if he was as described as the premises describe him, would be as the conclusion describes him as well. And the answer that we came up with there was, yes, if all Vulcans are cannibals and Captain Kirk is a Vulcan, that would automatically make him a cannibal. So there is a sense in which the logic of this argument does hold up. It is a valid argument, we would say. But Spock can still take umbrage and say this argument is unsound. And the reason is, the argument contains false premises. Actually, both premises in that argument were false. Now let's take a look at a different example. What if we say all Vulcans are rational and Captain Kirk is rational? Now that, for those of you who buy into Star Trek lore, are true premises, right? But what about the conclusion that Captain Kirk is a Vulcan? Is there something illogical about this argument? Let's take a better look. Suppose we say that all Vulcans are rational, and then we say Captain Kirk is a rational being. Well, what happens then? If Captain Kirk is a rational being, that doesn't tell me whether or not he's a Vulcan. He could be anywhere in that red canister, and actually, he's in the part that does not include Vulcans. So in this case, again, the argument is unsound, but for a different reason. The premises are true, but the logic does not lead to the conclusion. The logic is deductively invalid. See how that works? Now, here's a question for you. Can a valid argument have a false conclusion? I want you to think about that a second. A valid argument, yes, can have a false conclusion, just in case it has false premises that you started with. But can a sound argument have a false conclusion? No, it cannot. Sound arguments always have true conclusions, so be careful not to call an argument sound unless you've looked at that conclusion really carefully. Uh, sound arguments always have true conclusions because of two factors. The premises are true, it's admitted, and the structure of the argument is such that truth of the premises will be funneled down into the conclusion. You put those two points together, and that gets you to the, to the result that sound arguments in virtue of the true premises and the true or truth-preserving structure of the argument will always have true conclusions.